Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 602. And the topic today is make the effort. Laziness loses. And it may not be what you think. I've got a few angles to play with. But before I get to that, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is why I do what I do. I'm also what's inspired these talks I've done every day now for over two years, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And the topic today is actually a inspiration from something I saw posted, actually two things I got posted today. And I want to take it to another level, because I already felt like, was well, that, and then there's this, and then there's this. So let me play with this in front of you, if you don't mind. <laughs> And maybe you, take this, maybe you take this to heart as well and see the relevance for your own life as well. So, the topic today again, this episode number 602, two, yeah, two, I think, I lost track already, that was, <clears throat> it's over 600 now, <laughs> I'm losing track, what can I say? But yes, the title today is uh, Make the Effort, L- Laziness Loses, and I mean this in more than one way, and one of it's going to save your life. Ooh, that's going to sound scary. So let's jump in. Um... The thing that inspired this in the first place was about a friend of mine who's a dating matchmaker coach type person was posting about um, long distance relationships. Like how far? Because living in Los Angeles, some people, um, if you know LA's layout at all, won't date somebody the other side of the four or five freeway, or somebody who lives in the valley when they don't live when they live on the west side, or in Orange County if they live in LA. All these different things, which are only about well, in some cases a mile apart, in some cases five, ten miles apart. And so there's this whole conversation that was brewing in that post because it was very provocative about what boundaries people have and what limits people have and what they choose. Last week I spoke, I believe it was about dating demographics. And this is one of the, one of the headings about how far out from where you live are we in to look for love? And are you playing, doing it out of convenience, i.e. laziness, to do something within a certain range? That's the surface level. I'm going to go way deeper on that, so stay tuned. So for some people, it is basically, well, they're going to live within the same general vicinity as I do. Now, this may hark back, hark back to the old days when people basically only sort of visited within about two or three miles of where they lived. <clears throat> in fact, when I was growing up, not in the olden days, <laughs> but when I was growing up in high school, several of my um, peers were basically getting engaged and selling and getting married before they were 20. And were marrying somebody they went to school with. So they basically, they, they met married and settled down within about a mile of where they were, were born or raised. Do you know people like that? Because I certainly do. And yet, in my own family, um, no, it's not my brother and I, not my, I was thinking about my parents, but my brother, he met his wife working in London where he was working, but she was from Italy and they moved to Italy. So that's a bit of a shift. And I live out in the United States and I have done for over 30 years. So, it's unlike I can meet somebody who grew up where I was, where I grew up exactly. But if they did, and they moved out here. That's pretty cool. So geographically, that relationship um, inclusivity, the range of inclusivity, for a lot of people is very myopic or very. It's very like within the framework of as far as I can reach, and that's an error. I wouldn't say it's an error in approach, but it's limiting your options. To be really blunt. So if you're on the dating apps and saying you want to beat somebody who's within a three, four, five mile radius, because some of the apps can do that you may be limiting your choices. Because what if they're a mile further out than that? If your limit's five, what if they're six miles out? Just a thought. That's one of the things I'm going to talk about, but there's more to it than that. The real juicy part of this I want to speak to in, in um, my usual style <laughs> is that the dating paradigm, the dating options, the way that things are set up with apps and sites and dating sites and these sort of things makes meeting somebody very easy. Meeting somebody right, not so much, but definitely meeting somebody, very easy. And the, th- the problem with that is you don't always know what you're getting into. And so one of the things I talk about, we, I'm, I'm talking about here, and I did do a whole expose about the 12, um, well, that's different. No, that, that's a different conversation. That was yesterday's talk, but I recommend that one as well. No, that was number 600, so that was a few days ago now. Excuse me while I talk to myself and get myself back on track. So, dating is very accessible. 
to meet somebody, anybody, it's pretty straightforward. And you can do that without any, without much effort because what you're really in the place of doing is finding somebody just to meet. No qualification, just minimal demographics, as I talked about last week, and that's about it. I would offer some cautionary tales, but you probably know some yourself, of people who went out with somebody they met through a dating app and end up getting beaten up or raped or stiffed or abused or somehow so otherwise hurt. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it does happen occasionally. The reason why I'm bringing that in this conversation is because for some people out there, maybe not you, but people you know, their dating choices don't take them to the point of doing any further investigation. In fact, what they're a lot of people do is they go on the, on the surface of one swipe and they meet somebody. They don't do any research, they don't ask them any questions, they don't even meet them in a place that I would call safe. And I'll jump this in as quick, uh, a reminder too. I've said for a long time that when you go, uh, when you meet somebody through a dating app or dating site, somebody new, I recommend you go to a coffee date. In fact, I'm calling it a pre-date. The old fashioned way of going up a romantic restaurant in the evening when it's dark and dimly lit and, and you're in a very quiet place, I don't recommend that nowadays. It's not safe. Better that you meet somebody in broad daylight, in a safe place where there's lots of people around, somewhere where you're sober, so drinking coffee or something like that would help, so you get to know the person before you decide if you want to date them. Because really what that is, is a getting to know you session before a real date. That to me is not being lazy, that's being astute and being um, willing to take the next step. Now, in addition to that, if you're somebody who's looking for a real relationship, because let, let me preface a, do, do a sidebar for a second, but some people using the dating apps just to get laid or just to have somebody for some company. If that's all you want, so be it, but be aware you might catch other things besides that. And I don't mean diseases, well, maybe that too. But you may catch some flack or some trouble with somebody who doesn't necessarily want the same thing you do. So that's another part. But what I really want to speak to is that it's really important for you to know what you're looking for first. And this one speaks to what most people forget. Most people are looking for love without looking for, without knowing what they're looking with or looking from. Their focus is on meeting somebody, anybody, that will make them feel better. They don't even know what they really want. And it's an error in approach for a lot of people, frankly. I know so many people who are, I'm going to say this nicely. <sighs> I'm trying to find a nice way of saying this. They've chosen relationships that have cost them dearly, emotionally, maybe physically, maybe even financially, because they didn't do what I was called due diligence first. Part of that due diligence is not just make sure the other person is the right person, is safe, is, com is um, above board, is, is honest, and all these different things, but also for themselves and what they really want in a relationship. I've seen people, see people choose more than one time relationships that weren't what they really wanted because it seemed like it fit. Maybe it was chemistry based, or maybe it was just convenience because they lived, as I mentioned earlier, within five miles, you know, that sort of thing. My recommendation to you, if you're single and looking for love, is before you look any further for love, is to get really clear what you really want. What sort of partnership do you want to be in? Do you want a conscious relationship that's going to grow and expand and uplift you and inspire you? Do you want a relationship that's going to be just convenient when you hang out at home, watch TV? Are you looking for a relationship that is going to transform your life. Because if you don't have any plan, any relationship would do. And I mean that literally. I've seen, as I mentioned this yesterday and the day before in a couple of talks about the, actually no, I did talk about yesterday, about the wiring we take on, the programming we, we have installed from when we're younger that governs our choices as an adult until we change the wiring. So you may be saying, what I want is a relationship over here to my left, to your to your, your, your right. But what you end up is a relationship over here to the other side because what you're actually doing is being driven by subconscious programming. So part of the due diligence, part of that be making the effort is to do the rewiring inside so your choices are coming from a conscious place that's awake and aware versus your automatic pilot, the subconscious place that's where you're programmed and it's not what you really want. So there's a few things I'm putting on the table here to make, have you think about. One is the simple demographic stuff, how limiting you're making your choices. Secondly, is to really get clear about what you're looking for and be willing to do the due diligence, to even do some research if you want to. If you meet somebody first time, maybe know their full name. It sounds silly, but I recommend this. Do a search on their social media profiles. Check them out, see what they're about. You might discover that they might be married, <laughs> which wouldn't be good. You never know, because the dating apps don't show that. But if you go to the social media apps, they tend to maybe show more reality what they're about. Maybe seeing pictures when they're at the beach, 
getting drunk with their friends or some other thing. It's worth doing some research beyond just what you see in the dating profile because yes, there's an idealization, the feeling, well, I'm just gonna hold to what this vision I see and I wanna make sure it's true. But the truth is you're not making sure it's true unless you do some research. So that's the second part. The third part is to get clear what you really want. So really focus inwardly on what your vision is now, especially for the ladies, because we men, we like to look for targets and focus on where we're going. That's why we go hunting, why we go courting, go dating. That's all the same, genre, same language. But for women, the challenge has been is you've been trained by the culture to do the same thing, which puts you in your masculine. First step is to get clear, as I said, about what you really want. Second part is to start tuning that in to make it magnetic, to be an attracting agent to pull in what you really want. And yes, it does require work. It's not something to be lazy about. But when you set a vision in motion, an intention of what you really want, it has a habit of showing up when you're really aligned to it. I'm gonna put some links in the comments because I have a couple of things I can recommend that might help you with that. But I wanna make sure you get this point clearly that it's vital that you do the work to know what you really want if, and only if, you want a real, healthy, amazing, fulfilling relationship. Once in a while, there are these relationships that happen by serendipity where it's like the coincidence we suddenly meet somebody and it's just, everything lines up. But I would reckon, I would consider that for most people, they've actually done a lot of work before they got to that point. So that coincidence happened because they both prepared for what to happen when they met. It rarely happens without that. It does happen, but rarely. And if you're putting your vote or putting your intention around that happening for you, you may be pushing your eggs into one very, very, very small basket. I recommend you expand your opportunity options by being really clear of what you want. So open up to your vision of what you really believe you desire and are worthy of and you start putting your energy in the alignment with that so what you attract matches what you want. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. It does require some effort. So that's why I keep saying, don't be lazy, is make the effort. And I mean this to really honor yourself and yes, to honor your relationship choices, but it starts inside of you. Just seeing if there's anything else I wanna to add to that because this is giving you some things to think about, I hope. Because for many people, the relationship choices they make are um, as simple as wiping their finger across a screen. And that isn't what I recommend as the highest form of choosing relationships at all. So if you're done with that, the links I put in the comments you want to check out. It may in fact line up for you. If you want to keep doing the same old thing, get the same old results, go right ahead. It's your life. But I do invite you to take your relationship choices seriously. I'm actually in the process of writing out something for myself, just to be totally transparent. Um, and I'll put the link in for this in the comments as well. The Rocket 2019 playbook that I've created last year, well, I created at the end of this year and put out for the, my audience. I've been working through it myself because I figured I might as well be a guinea pig in my own program. I know it works already because I've seen it work, but I figured, well, I'm gonna put some, stuff, put some um, um, energy into what I really want. As in, I need to practice what I preach, so I'm getting off my butt and doing some things about it. So I invite you to do the same thing. I'll put a link in the comments for, the, for that program as well, and um, invite you to do some work. And if you want some support, the link will be there for that as well. So with that, I think, I think I've made the point. Yeah. Don't be lazy. Make the effort, choose for yourself, align with what you really want, and watch your life transform. You can have what you really want, but you gotta do the work. And with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below in the, in the uh, comment box below. I will respond when I sign off. This is a Facebook Live that goes onto YouTube, so I'll give you the links for those as well. Um, I go live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I also put them onto my, I should say I archive them to my business page, which is also facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. If you want to watch more on YouTube, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch them there and scan through the fun titles that speak out to you and uh, have some fun. Oh, by the way, I've started condensing down my title from a friend of mine's recommendation last night because I've done these now for 600 broadcasts. <laughs> so... I thought I'd just take Messages for the Masculine and, and, and compact it down to the initials because that gives me more, more room to put a better title in. That way the titles stand out more and you know what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna go back and change 600 broadcasts to that as well. We'll see about that. I'll get around to it at some point. So that's why they're now abbreviated for that reason. 
So I appreciate you being with me. Um, oh, last thing. I do have a growing podcast with these in audio format. You can get those from my um, podcast channel on iTunes, which is called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to the iTunes channel. I mean the podcast rather, and download the audios if you wish and listen to them when you want. Um, and hopefully it's been of help to you. I appreciate you being with me and listening because these are meant to support you. They do support me as well, just to be selfish, but I want to make sure they're not just for me only, they're for you as well. So if you've got any thoughts about this, please put them below in the comments. If you want to share this with anybody you think should watch this, please share it with them. And uh, if you want any help, I'll put some links in the comments that will give you some support. Thank you for being with me. As always, I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care. Bye.